Let's see, I, I'll uh, annotate the uh, start of the movie. We've got about 20 minutes here, and we start with the launch, which usually doesn't need much uh, explanation. You see Atlantis on the left, and Endeavor, our, our uh, rescue vehicle on the right. Close up Atlantis, just to make sure we're going to get to the right vehicle. Okay, the two out there, that's a question. And a happy crew that uh, after a seven month delay uh, from uh, October to May. Can you bring up the audio? There's Scooter uh, getting in first. There's me getting in my seat, kind of tight, uh, slipping in there. And finally, Megan last. I'm going to go for launch. GC, go. Got it. Go. Fido, go. Prop, go. GMC, go. Max, go. Eagle, go. Ecom, go. FAO, go. Payloads, go. It's a great day to go fly. So on behalf of the KSC Processing and Launch Team, I'd like to wish you, your crew, and the whole Hubble Space Telescope team a, a great mission. Good luck, Godspeed, and we'll see you back here in about 11 days. And after a go from uh, Houston and uh, the Cape, you see the water suppression system uh, kick off. Six seconds uh, later, uh, the main engine's light right prior to launch, and the mains lit, and we had our first master alarm going uphill, which got our attention. A lot of discussion on the flight deck there. We rolled uh, on uh, heads down, and you can see a good view from the uh, solids. After about two minutes, uh, we get off the solid rocket boosters, and you'll see that right now. And you'll see Atlantis fly away with the external tank uh, booster on the right. And then uh, up at the top, you'll see Atlantis here in a second. Finally, uh, Mike Good and uh, John Grunsfeld took uh, a video and uh, stills of the external tank uh, when we had main engine cutoff. Uh, bueno and John opened the doors, and we were off and running for the mission. Um, our task for Flight Day 3, of course, is to chase down the telescope in orbit, and uh, you're seeing scenes from that here. Ray J was uh, running the checklist from the commander's seat, and uh, Scooter and I are at the aft uh, flight deck windows along with uh, Mike Good looking out the overhead and giving us that range rate information. And uh, as we get uh, close enough to the telescope, we use the robotic arm to reach out and grab it and then park it at the back of the payload bay on the uh, rotating servicing structure. Uh, once that's complete, the guys can get ready to go out and do their EVAs. There's a lot of prep work, of course, that goes into that. They've got to get the suits ready and checked out. Uh, they've also got to get all of their tools ready, and I think it was something like 114 brand new tools uh, developed specifically for this mission. So there's a lot of prep work that goes in, uh, goes on there. There's Ray J with the uh, EVA checklist, helping the guys get into their suits for each of the EVAs. And uh, flight day uh, four was the uh, first day of uh, five back-to-back -back EVAs. And uh, John and I had a few uh, last words before heading out. And this is John on the first spacewalk uh, coming out the hatch. And I came out as well, just following him, uh, smiling from ear to ear. And uh, that pretty much stayed on my face the whole time. Um, the day started out with the uh, replacement of Wide Field 2 camera with Wide Field 3 camera. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Wide Field 2 didn't want to come out of the telescope. Uh, so we spent a little time. Okay, here we go. Got it. Working that bolt. It turned. It and, definitely uh, turned. We spent, yep. I don't know, probably, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes trying to get that bolt out, but finished out the, that task with the replacement of uh, uh, wide field, with the, replacing it with the wide field three camera, which takes some, uh, we're looking forward to some spectacular images of uh, deep space with that. And uh, it's quite a large uh, instrument, as you can see there. It's one of the radial instruments about the size of a baby grand piano. Um, and uh, I think the whole astronomical community was very pleased that uh, we were able to work through that uh, first of many contingencies throughout the mission, um, sort of one after another. And great shot uh, from the aft flight deck as we uh, stowed the old camera, and uh, this is a little rewind here of us installing Wide Field 3 uh, smoothly into the telescope uh, to finish out the first half of the day. And the remainder of the activities for, for this day were also uh, – a high priority for us, it was the uh, replacement of the uh, command and data handling module that had failed back in the fall and caused us to uh, delay our launch until May. And uh, we had planned, uh, you know, for the last part of the, uh, the six months training for the mission, really working around replacement of that module, and we were happy to get that installed as well uh, to get the telescope back up to operating uh, uh, condition, really to have the ability to communicate with the scientific instruments.
And uh, so EVA day one went well for us. We uh, completed all the tasks and uh, then uh, started getting ready for the, the next day uh, for Mike and Mike to head out the door. Well, after, after a long day of work outside, there's still a lot of work to do. Uh, once they come back inside, we still had a couple hours of work uh, just gathering up all the tools from that day, put them away, and then find all our tools for the next day and set up our mini workstations and the tool board that you see there. So on flight day five, we went out on the second of our five back-to-back -back, uh, EVAs. Um, Mass is already outside there. He's welcoming me on my first uh, trip out the hatch and into the uh, vacuum of space there. Mike got, uh, Mass got right to work there. He's back at the telescope. Uh, you can see his reflection there. And uh, he's going to help me open up the door so we can actually uh, climb inside the telescope and uh, swap out the three rate sensor units. Each of these 25-pound uh, boxes had uh, two gyros inside, so we replaced all six gyros. Uh, there's a shot of mass actually inside the telescope. He's uh, disconnecting the rate sensor unit, and then you can see on his helmet cam, he's handing it out to me. And that one came out very easily. This was the first of the three that we were swapping out. So then here I'm using a, uh, a pick, what we call a pick stick, uh, kind of a modified Home Depot tool to uh, put the uh, <laughs> a short moment of uh, happiness there as we got the word that the first uh, the first box was good to go. We struggled on the next two and then uh, also struggled getting the doors closed at the end. But uh, after six hours, we were complete with the first part of our uh, spacewalk and we were ready to move on to the uh, second task, which was to replace the uh, one of the two batteries. This is, a, this is a battery, not a double A, but a 500-pound uh, uh, nickel-hydrogen battery. And uh, we replaced one, and then uh, the other team did on their last EVA. So here we are back inside after an eight-hour spacewalk, uh, celebrating with the boss and trying to get our story straight. <laughs> well, no rest for the, uh, for the weary. We did, as Drew said, five back-to-back -back EVAs. So this has gone out right, right the next day for EVA 3. Our uh, primary task on EVA-3 was to, again, open up the big doors on the telescope and take out a really historic instrument, the Corrective Optics Space Telescope Axial Replacement, otherwise known as COSTAR. This is the one that has the little arms that came out and corrected the incorrectly shaped mirror back in 1993 that restored Hubble's vision for all the scientific instruments, as well as the wide field, too. But we took out that big uh, refrigerator-sized instrument Drew trained for years in the gym, lifting weights to be able to handle uh, holding those things at one point with just one hand uh, to get it out. And then we put in the new uh, cosmic origin spectrograph, which will be a great instrument that will help put some of the physics into astrophysics. Uh, after that, we went on to the first of the instrument repairs, where we actually went into the instruments and pulled tiny screws out. Here you can see me with a screwdriver and then a power screwdriver. Uh, this was uh, part of our mission devoted to the study of tiny screws in space. <laughs> in order to get access to four circuit cards, you can just see them there for a moment, uh, that we pulled out and put in new circuits. Uh, fortunately, the first three cards came out easily. Uh, the fourth one gave us a little bit more trouble, but we got them all out and put new electronics in and have restored the vision of the advanced camera for surveys, which uh, we put in on the previous mission. Uh, Mike Massimino actually hooked it up, and uh, it died just a couple of years ago due to a power failure, and we put in new electronics that brought that back to life, closing out uh, EVA-3 as we fly over the Baja Peninsula, uh, heading southward over Mexico. We were pretty, uh, pretty happy after that EVA. That uh, was one we were very worried about how it would go, and it ended up being uh, just in six and a half hours. And here you can see me coming in, uh, adrenaline still carrying me through the airlock. We did get a uh, chance to uh, eat in space, and uh, this is one of the group uh, times we did eat. And you can see John there upside down eating. So you could eat in whatever attitude you want to do. Here's Drew uh, making a tortilla. And if you, if you just leave everything uh, very still, you can uh, make a pretty nice tortilla there. We had to include him eating it at the very end. 
Uh, I did some exercise in space. I shot an IMAX uh, movie scene, and then I had uh, a break, so I was on the, bu the bike, and we did exercise. For all the kids, uh, we had to show this. Uh, I was sitting in the, <laughs> the space potty. There's some words there, but I, I didn't include them. You can guess what that's for, and you can guess what that's for. <laughs> We did have a problem with the lattice with a little bit of water on the water separator. And you can see Megan putting the light on and going actually in the floor of Atlantis. You can see all the wires and uh, below those, those uh, uh, streamer, the um, formers there is actually the under, on the other side of that is tiles. So uh, we're on the very bottom of Atlantis there. And uh, in a second here, there's Scooter with a rag cleaning up some water on the floor. And we did one experiment. John is activating this experiment here. Um, so he's turning a crank, and that activated. And then uh, I think it was 24 hours later, I deactivated it. And so we did one experiment. Uh, we were celebrating the uh, 400th anniversary of uh, Galileo's observations with his telescope. And that is an exact replica of Galileo's telescope, the telescope he used to, to do his uh, observations. And uh, so John and, and I are playing around with it. We also have it on TV show. Which is, Good to see you again. I like In my corner. In your co Scooter's, Scooter's corner. corner. Exactly. In his real corner. You're, you Luckily, go? we didn't have any sponsors that were upset with their ratings. It was on NASA TV only. <laughs> and here's uh, no words, but Scooter's explaining how we rendezvous with the telescope, believe it or not. And uh, we had some press conferences. We got a call from the president, and uh, we had a uh, Senate hearing while we were up in space as well, and that was all kind of fun. Um, for EVA-4, and we're getting the telescope in position for that, uh, it was Mike Good and I, Bueno and I, went out again. It was our turn to go out. And uh, the major task was to uh, repair the Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph, or what we call STIS is the acronym for it, and uh, everything was going pretty well until we had to get that handle off that you see there on the right. That's my helmet camera. And I just could not get this one lower bolt to uh, to go. And uh, we went and got some contingency tools. We even picked up some tape. Believe that darn handrail. And Sunset in 11 minutes. Andrew just summed, summed it up, that darn handrail. So the solution came to just yank it off. And this was not downlink, so you're some of the first people to ever see this publicly. But this is what I was doing when no one else was looking. Yeah. And it worked just fine. I was very glad that we did not have downlink. Thank you for applauding me for breaking the telescope. Um, after we got that thing out of the way, uh, we were able to continue with the repair. And we had a few little problems, but it, from the, you know, nothing like that handrail being in the way. That's a capture plate that we put over the, the instrument that allowed us to access 117 small screws that we needed to remove from the access panel. Then we removed this uh, power supply, put a new one in, uh, sealed it up, and uh, so far so good. It looks like this is up and working again. Um, I think we're on to EVA-5 now. On EVA-5, we put in the second of the, the new batteries. And... You can see Drew and myself, this is a view from my helmet camera exchanging those batteries. It really was a joy to, to be able to handle those 450 pound, almost 500 pound batteries with ease. We also changed out a fine guidance sensor. This is one of the other parts of Hubble that allows it to, to point so accurately for such long periods of time. Uh, about the size of a baby grand piano again, and I had to, to maneuver that around. Uh, I had a stuck bolt on that as well, but we, by the time we got to the fifth EVA, we know how to handle that. Uh, as part of our extreme Hubble makeover, we also put on some new insulation on the outside of Hubble to help it in its, in its hopefully long life ahead to, uh, to stay cool. After uh, five EVAs, we found that there were no more parts in the payload bay that we hadn't already installed. And it was time to, to say goodbye to Hubble the telescope, wish it well on its voyage. And after all the repair and upgrade work was completed, of course, it was time to release the telescope. So we uh, used the robotic arm again to pull it up out of the payload bay and uh, hold it out over the side. And then uh, you'll see us back away from it and uh, Scooter and Ray J do a series of burns to, to move us away. This is everybody kind of getting their last look 
um, before we before we send it on its way. I think there's some audio here. And Dab, a Ten free seconds. try, Scooter, you got that. Let's see. I'm going to select Five a Five seconds, the mode try. switch is in auto. Yes. Three, two, one, release. I'm backing away. I see, you got it open. Clear the pin. Clear the pin. Mode switches and off. Clear the antenna. And uh, there it goes. Scooter's just done the uh, impulses to move us away, and you'll see the telescope go right over the uh, overhead windows. Very, very large telescope, about the size of a bus. So what you can't see here is all of us ducking down because it looks like it's <laughs> going to just clock us right in the head. On the bottom of the telescope there, you can see the soft capture mechanism that we installed for a future vehicle to go up there to the telescope. Here you see, once again, a whole bunch of bodies crammed under the, the flight deck there trying to get one last look at the telescope as it, uh, as it goes away to continue its uh, voyage of discovery in the universe. There's uh, Ray J and Scooter consulting over the checklist and uh, running through the procedures to move us away. It's a nice shot that uh, Three, Mike Good and, and John, two, I think, took. Kind of the one, final, final sunset. <laughs> Uh, here we are doing an orbit adjust burn. We were up at a, a higher altitude and uh, we brought part of our orbit down into a lower altitude to get us out of that high debris zone. Uh, then we had some time off actually. We got to uh, um, do a video conference with our families and, uh, and basically just do some uh, fun astronaut tricks. Here we are playing with our food. <laughs> and here we are conducting some fluid experiments in microgravity. <laughs> That's some tasty water there. Here we're uh, looking at the uh, stability and rotation and microgravity. It's a very, very important experiments that we're doing. This actually was called up by MIT. They wanted to see us. MIT speak. asked us to do this very important research for them, so we were helping them out. Of course, uh, near the end of the mission, uh, while the spacewalkers are all happy to be done, we still have to land. So uh, we're taking a look here at a computer simulation to practice uh, the whole flight deck team getting back into rhythm, going through entry, and practicing a little bit, and getting a readout. Then uh, on Friday, the day we were supposed to land, we got into our orange suits and then got out of them. And on Saturday again. And then finally on Sunday, we got into them, but we got waved off for one day. So you can see... Megan was impressed with my uh, Stevie Wonder imitation. <laughs> it is an incredible vehicle that takes you home through this plasma, 3,000 degree glowing white hot uh, behind us there. Finally uh, flying into the daylight, landing at Edwards because the weather was too bad at Kennedy still, and coming around till we roll on final. We're about 12,000 feet up at this point, falling at 12,000 feet per minute. The shuttle's a glider, and from the point uh, we burn our engines 12,000 miles away, we know for sure that we're going to be hitting the ground somewhere. <laughs> the challenge is to have the gear down, as Ray J put it down, and the runway underneath you when that happens. <laughs> All told, though, it was great to be back. Uh, with a vehicle full of used parts with all the new stuff left up there on Hubble and all the connections made, uh, everything seems to be working well. We're really happy that uh, Hubble is still up there continuing uh, its voyage. And I think uh, we're gonna see a little clip uh, with some comments by John after this. a very challenging mission. Hubble isn't just a satellite. It's about humanity's quest for knowledge. As Dr. C. Clark says, the only way of finding the limits of the possible is by going beyond them into the impossible. And on this mission, we tried some things that many people said was impossible, fixing stiff, repairing ACS, achieving all the content that we have in this mission. But we've achieved that 
and we wish Hubble the very best. It's really a sign of the great country that we live in that we're able to do things like this on a marvelous spaceship like Space Shuttle Atlantis. And I'm convinced that if we can solve problems like repairing Hubble, getting to space, doing the servicing we do, traveling 17,500 miles an hour around the Earth, that we can achieve other great things like solving our energy problems and our climate problems, all things that are in the middle of NASA's prime and core of value. I want to wish Hubble its own set of adventures, and with the new instruments we've installed, that it may unlock further mysteries of the universe.